New at 6, closing arguments begin tomorrow in the Elizabeth Holmes case. Attorneys on both sides will make their final cases to the jury before the panel decides the fate of the former Theranos CEO. KTV investigative reporter Evan Cernofsky takes a look now at some of the key pieces of evidence in this case. They have to distill this evidence down to make it understandable to the jury. Attorneys in the Elizabeth Holmes trial will attempt to sum up one of the most complex federal cases in recent memory. The jury must weigh more than 900 exhibits, along with testimony from more than 30 witnesses, including nine former Theranos employees, 12 investors, and Holmes herself. The job of both the prosecution and the defense will be to distill the facts down so that the jury can understand their point of view in this trial. But a few key points may determine whether the jury finds Holmes guilty or not of nine counts of fraud and two counts of conspiracy. Prosecutors have said she lied and cheated, dazzling investors with misleading claims. At trial, they played secretly recorded conversations in which she claimed her blood analyzers were being used by pharmaceutical companies and the military, even though they were not. We thus built the business around our partnerships with pharmaceutical companies and our contracts with the military, uh, wherein we could deploy our framework. Prosecutors also played interviews between Holmes and journalist Roger Parloff for his 2014 Fortune magazine profile. In one recording, Holmes claimed that Theranos used a bank of proprietary analyzers in its testing lab. It would be about um, how many of those devices in all? Um, there's probably, I mean, it are, so we have actually several last year. Our biggest one probably has um, like, 50 of them, and I, I would put that off the record because yeah. we, don't, we don't want to publish that. In truth, Holmes admitted her testing lab was mostly using modified Siemens Advia analyzers, like the one shown here, not the Edison devices that were the foundation of her company. Holmes said she never told investors or business partner Walgreens about the switch out because they involved trade secrets. KTVU legal analyst and veteran attorney Michael Cardoza says Holmes' explanation will be one of the biggest hurdles for the defense to overcome. But what she was hiding, what she was fogballing, was this machine didn't work at all. So this trade secret excuse really goes to her perpetration of the fraud. And I'm sure the government will point that out. And while on the stand, Holmes said she added pharmaceutical companies' logos to studies, singing the praises of Theranos' technology. She said she didn't believe investors would actually think those companies conducted the studies. Did she convey, I didn't have the intent to defraud people. I had nothing but good intentions. That is going to be the question. Holmes's case was far simpler than what the prosecution put on. She talked about Theranos as her life's work, one that ultimately failed due to mistakes, not fraud. She pointed the finger at former lab director Dr. Adam Rosendorf, who signed verification reports for the company's lab tests. She blamed other failures on former business partner and boyfriend Sonny Balwani, whom she also accused of abusing her. Spectators in the media will be lining up before dawn Thursday, hoping to get one of those coveted seats in the courtroom. I'll be there reporting live with any new breaking details. In the newsroom, Evan Cernofsky, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Well, Evan will be live outside the courthouse in San Jose tomorrow morning, and when the trial does resume, he'll be blogging live from inside court. You can follow along on our website, ktvu.com.